Many Darwinists claim that geology or paleontology gives one of the strongest proofs of their theory. In the older layers or strata of Earth, they find fossils of comparative simple life forms. Down through the millions of years, new layers were deposited and life evolving, they say. And all the while, more fossils were being formed. In the more recent strata, they claim to find the higher forms of life. This, they argue, proves evolution. However, the record in the rocks is strong circumstantial evidence of creation because no slow evolving from family to family is found. But families remain constant and new families appear suddenly with no hint of having gone through long periods of gradual development. Yet, as these changing creatures lived and died for hundreds of millions of years and new strata were being deposited, no fossil has really been found that clearly shows one of the millions of necessary transitional forms for this junk to be true. Why not? <laughs> Come on, let's hear it. Well, the fact is that the reliable Earth has preserved in fossil form millions of creatures of families living today and some extinct ones but which are not transitional forms. Why so many fossils of existing families, but no series of fossils showing evolution of new organs? Huh? Really? Why? Or the changing of scales to feathers? Or fins to feet? Real examples. Not ambiguous stuff desperately appealed to, to try to force fit it that way. But clear transitions, unambiguous, irrefutable ones, tell me. Uh, or a feet to wings. Or if fishies getting real hind legs. Or if snakes sprouting fur. None of that in the fossil record. Not even a hint of that stuff. No clear, unambiguous anything. Well, what did Sir Darwin say? Let's do some quote mining, okay? Darwin attempted a feeble answer, and it's an old and tired and convenient answer. And here it is. Quote, Geology assuredly does not reveal any such finely graded organic chain. And this perhaps is the most obvious and serious objection which can be urged against the theory. The explanation lies, however, in the extreme imperfection of the geological record. Origin of the Species, Volume 2, page 49, 6th edition. Nice quote mine, huh? Odd that the record always suffers from, quote, extreme imperfection at those critical points where families are being supposedly, quote, bridged, yet is so perfectly adequate within each family, and no clear, unambiguous, transitional anything. And the same situation exists now as it did in Darwin's day. And here is a very bad and appalling blow to the theory of evolution. The fossil record begins in rock layers that geologists call, quote, Cambrian, estimated at some half a billion years of age. Okay. In these layers, life first appears, bursting in the fossil record of rocks suddenly, and in a great diversity of forms, sea creatures that give no hint of age-long periods of gradual development from shapeless protoplasm. In the pre-Cambrian rock layers, immediately beneath the Cambrian layers loaded with fossils, no real fossils appear. None necessary to produce all the life forms in the Cambrian. 
There may be some life forms, but none necessary to supposedly cause what's there in the Cambrian by Darwinian evolutionary theory, or if there was no special or direct creation anywhere. Yet evolutionists claim that life existed for a billion years before the time of the Cambrian strata. Why that claim when they have no fossil evidence? Why, kiddies? Uh, fossils weren't left? Uh, fossils were destroyed? But meanwhile, uh, you have fossils of jellyfish left there. You know, there are some, but none necessary to produce all the various life forms in the Cambrian. The old tired line of fossils were not left or they were destroyed only goes so far and it's very convenient and it's very weak. So why that claim all the time? It's simple, because arrogant, selfish, dishonest eggheads and elitists and smug self-worshippers refuse to give any real consideration to the idea of special creation of life suddenly by a divine creator or an outside intelligence or an intentional director or to consider at all the Yahweh Elohim of scripture as a real possibility and they feel they should have a long period of time to allow for evolution to evolve a speck of protoplasm in some freaky, mythical, magical, illogical, unscientific way into the variety of highly organized life that suddenly appears in the Cambrian rocks. Two-thirds of their record is missing. Their beginning is a billion-year gap, a blank. What blind credulity these characters have in their philosophy of Darwinian evolution. Those fossils in the Cambrian don't show what evolutionists need them to show. And there are no real fossils at all in the pre-Cambrian to even explain the Cambrian. Okay, and what about those missing links? Anyway, as far as the fossil record, the quote, missing links truly remain missing, and the only thing that dishonest, biased evolutionists can hold up are ambiguous things at best. Ida? Artie? Ticktailic? Oh, Kathy? Hype much? Uh, hallucinate much? Seeing things that aren't there because you want them to be there? Like Okapi, which is really in the zebra family. Oh my goodness. With the horrible holes in the Cambrian and pre Cambrian systems remaining, it's embarrassing and it's pathetic that they still want to claim that, quote, fossils support their nonsense. And there is not just one, quote, missing link. There are at least 20,000 missing links between every species in the animal kingdom. The appalling gaps in the fossil record are still there and don't go away just because Darwinist drones want to ignore them or rationalize them away with old desperate lines like, quote, no fossils were left or, quote, the fossils were destroyed. Again, though, funny how the fossils are intact within each family and species in the fossil record. As one scientist once wrote, quote, the curious thing is that there is a consistency about the fossil record. The fossils go missing in all the important places. Where then are all the quote, in between stages or links of this supposed evolutionary chain in either the fossil record or in the record of living things today? Why is it always the same story that the transitions the real links between major groups of plants and animals are missing. Why do the major groups of complex organisms always appear suddenly, separated by structural gaps from members of other groups? Why are such things as arms, legs, eyes, and wings always found to be completely developed? If Darwinian evolution were true, there simply had to be various stages of development in different limbs and organs. 
there should be at least a few real ones, not ambiguous, vague nonsense touted as, quote, transitions, neurotically by exaggerating Darwinists for pathological agendas, but real, clear, unmistakable, irrefutable transitional forms and links of bones and organs and eyes and spines and wings all over the place. But such stages are never found. We should have millions of them all over museums. But such stages, real, clear, unambiguous forms, links, transitions, and stages, and gradations are never found. These hard facts distress some more informed and honest Darwinists. So of course, maniacs like Stephen Jay Gould had to concoct his quote, punctuated equilibrium theory to try to somehow account for all the sudden bursts, jumps, and gaps in the fossil record. Gould admitted the problem, so he came up with one myth to cover the flaws of the other. But he challenged other Darwinists to finally stop denying the problem or rationalizing the facts away and to finally admit the data.